Patrick CC, this video is titled The Keith Lee Effect. Imagine you own a restaurant, and the difference between having a line of hungry customers out the door every day or your establishment looking like a ghost town is based on the experience <laughs> of one man. That one man is not a professional food critic nor a culinary expert, but millions of people around the country treat his word like gospel. That is the Keith Lee effect. Keith Lee is either Batman or Joker when it comes to restaurant owners. But once you hear his story, you will understand why he has such a cult-like following. It's much deeper than a guy who has decent taste buds. Keith Lee is a man who failed at the one thing he was actually good at. Then at his darkest moment, he refused to give up and created a meteoric influence in an industry he had no business being in. Keith described himself as a very small child who felt the need to display his dominance to overcompensate for his short stature. His bad behavior led to him getting expelled from every school in the Detroit, Michigan area before attending a charter school as a last resort, where he barely managed to graduate the eighth grade. So by the time I got to high school, I was a wee head, mm -hmm. smoking every day. I'm talking about bad, bad, mm -hmm. like every day. Um, my freshman year, I had a 0. .6 oh. GPA. Things would get even worse for kids. Wait, what the f***? The 0. .6 GPA? You can go that low? 59%. Good lord. He was brain dead. Keith in high school where he lived in the shadow of his brother. Keith's older brother Kevin had already garnered a remarkable reputation as a star athlete who graduated with a 3.9 GPA before receiving a scholarship to wrestle for Grand Valley State University, which is an NCAA Division II school. Keith decided to follow in his brother's footsteps for all the wrong reasons. When I got there, it was more out of spite. It was more out of uh, arrogance. It was more out of just like, now I'm approved to you, I can do it. And I don't even want to do it. I'm going right. to just do it because you told me I can't do something else. So I'm going to just do it just to shit on you, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He utilized all his pent-up aggression and transferred it out on the wrestling mat, where he showed a genuine talent for the sport and squashed his competition. Right, but he was a stubborn, disobedient child who didn't focus on his grade. Nah, that's a good, that's a good thug flick, bro. Clap it up for that right there, man. Most niggas' thug flicks don't look this clean, bro. It's a good thug flick right here. You could tell he was up to no good. Kids didn't stay disciplined and quit the team. Then his father got arrested and imprisoned following a heated altercation with some people in his neighborhood. His father's inability to provide for his family meant Keith, his mother, and younger brother were forced to move into an abandoned home where Keith started to question his religious faith and overall perspective on life. At his lowest moment, the only way he could go was up. He stopped smoking, stopped hanging out with bad influences, okay. and got back into wrestling. Fast forward to his senior year, Keith averaged a 3.6 GPA and was preparing to wrestle at the Michigan High School State Championships, oh! which hadn't been achieved by a student at Southfield High School since the 90s. He received a partial scholarship to wrestle for Indiana Tech, but made a critical error. He never actually enrolled in the school. He showed up at Indiana Tech, connected with the wrestling coach, attended random classes, and got fully immersed into the college life. What? He was expecting a dorm room since he thought he had a scholarship, but when he showed up to the admissions office, they were confused. They taking <laughs> Bro, this nigga got <laughs> Let me get this straight. He got admitted into a college and then never signed up. How did he know what classes he was supposed to go to? Was he just spitballing? He was just opening random lecture halls and auditoriums just to see which one he was vibing with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of the funniest things I heard today, bro. To the office, and they like, you don't have no paperwork filled out, sir. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, they was, what? Like, they was like, the only thing we have is the offer letter that we sent you. What? So we only got your name and your information from the offer letter. They was like, that's all we know about you. We don't know nothing else. <laughs> like a birthday party invitation. You sent me the invitation. I just showed up. Keith laughs about the situation now, but at the time, he was devastated. They told Keith if he hey, didn't pay them $20,000 for the semester and $2,000 for the application fee, he wouldn't be allowed to go to school. Unable to get a loan, Keith had to move back with his family who relocated to Las Vegas. He was now sharing bunk beds with his 14-year-old brother who regularly reminded Keith that he was a loser. At this point, I'm in the deepest depression I've been in in a long time. Because I'm like, oh, the reality is sitting in. Yeah, He's right. Yeah. I'm not in school. I don't have a job. I got fired already. I didn't quit a job. My track history with work is already terrible. I didn't got kicked out of school. Yeah. I don't have no other offers. Right. Nothing is nothing in life is looking bright to me right now. Right. I don't have nothing going for me. 
Keith's older brother Kevin had recently secured a contract to fight in the UFC as Kevin the Motown Phenom Lee, and Kevin was a savage. At his peak, he held what? a 16-2 professional record and was toe-to-toe -to -toe with legends like Tony Ferguson and Charles Oliveira. Kevin I forced even know that. Keith to fun? get into the gym with him, and on his first day, their coach Dewey Cooper realized the potential Keith had as an MMA fighter. Desperate for money and a purpose, Keith trained for a year straight and won his first four amateur fights. Yo. The only two losses he had were by split decision meaning he was a very promising prospect. However, he was earning next to nothing for these, 500, maybe $1,000 per fight. Keep in mind, this was over the course of three years. So he was broke following a rotation of various low-end jobs. But luckily, he met his girlfriend, oh, now wife, Ronnie, while working for ASICS. Keith credits Ronnie with being the anchor ASICS. to keeping him grounded and focused on becoming the best version of himself. Following a submission victory against Leonardo Carvalho at Global Legion FC 13, Keith proposed to his girlfriend and Ronnie and intentionally got her pregnant two days later. On the oh, same day shit. of the proposal, God damn, this nigga sperm cells is elite. Two days later? Well, he didn't waste no time. He really can't afford to fuck up. If you don't wear a condom, it's, it's, he's cooked, bro. He's gonna have a big ass family, bro. Keith's manager informed him that his victory against Carvalho earned him a six-figure contract with Bellator. Nigga said, hold on, hold on, look at the chat, nigga said W nut. Yeah, man. <laughs> won his very first Bellator bout against Sean Bunch. Hey, it took tough, many though. years, but once he finally had a support system around him, wife, coaches, brother, he was able to crawl out of the repetitive cycle of depression and low ambition. Now with some free time and spare income, Keith signed up for TikTok. Keith's journey on TikTok started just like anyone else, participating in trends for no reason other than it seemed fun. No, From there, his uploads were just random things that pertain to his everyday life. He was getting maybe 50 views per video, but it seemed more like an outlet for him to have fun rather than start a business. But then the pandemic hit, the world shut down, and Keith needed to make something happen. I downloaded TikTok after I kept saying I wouldn't. Now I'm sick and tired of every video I post, only getting 50 views. I'm gonna sit here with my dog and tip me and get famous. In an attempt to garner more views, Keith began posting psychology facts videos. He gained a little bit of traction, but it didn't last long. He started to become desperate for virality. You wanna get famous? Follow these simple instructions. Download another mother f app, cause this ain't the one. This ain't it, Chief. It ain't never gonna happen. <laughs> never. He would cash out people if they solved a riddle. He posted math problems for people to solve. Even though he looked defeated, he refused to give up. At this point, Keith was obsessed with the platform, posting daily, if not multiple times Niggas per day. Hooked. He started featuring his wife Ronnie on his page after he went semi-viral talking about building a nursery for their expected baby. He then proceeded to document milestones throughout their pregnancy, many of which received thousands of views and ignited a dramatic shift in Keith's content. In September of 2020, Keith won his second fight against Vinicius Zani. Whatever they have in store for me i'm always here to fight i'll fight as soon as my daughter is born my daughter is born in four days so as soon as she gets here i'm ready to go again he didn't lie just Damn. one week later he and ronnie welcomed their first child carter from there keith's whole tiktok was dedicated to documenting him being a parent his loving and nurturing attitude towards his child attracted a large following of supporters he provided them with wholesome moments such as clipping his daughter's nails for the first time and celebrating her first halloween Why are this was so his small, family bro? man era Keith took a fight on short notice, just two months after his previous, to fight on the main card at Bellator 253. Unfortunately, he lost by decision to Rafian Stotts, but that didn't ruin his spirits. Keith the family man kept posting his terrible dancing videos and even started sprinkling in some cooking content. By mid-2021, he had accumulated 1 million followers and was Damn. averaging maybe 100,000 views per post. This was his foundation, the people that knew Keith was a humble, honest family man. Unfortunately, he would hit a new rock bottom when he lost his six-figure Bellator contract. In August of 2021, he was set to face his toughest opponent yet, who was undefeated. Keith was beaten and bloody and then submitted in just the first round, then got up while unconscious and stumbled headfirst into the cage. The clips of his loss made the rounds on social media. He was embarrassed. He got a call from his manager saying he was cut from Bellator. Keith was back to rock bottom. His first TikTok back after his loss was him, poetically, ordering some food. I had these sunglasses on because my eyes black and my face is beat up. I'm fine though, for anybody. Well, I'm not fine, but I'll be fine. He had 1 million followers, but he was only making around $400 per month on TikTok. His fight career was looking grim, and TikTok didn't seem realistic. Then he got a call from the owner of Harold's Chicken just a couple days after his loss. They asked him to do a review of their establishment. At the time, he didn't- Just randomly?
He became a food reviewer just randomly? Someone just hit him up and say, hey, you want to review our shit? I know you fucking fight. I know you kill niggas in an octagon for a living, but in case you ever want to review food and do a complete pivot in your life, we're right here, bro. We're interested. What the fuck? That's... <laughs> know it, but Keith just discovered his next big venture. <laughs> All right, Harold's Chicken in Las Vegas. They didn't have no mac and cheese, but it's okay. He did it, Overall, too? I get a food up. Nine out of ten. Without question. Following his review of Harold's Chicken, Keith made food reviews as a side quest on his page. However, his main focus was on family vlogs and cooking wow. content. He was still largely referred to as the cooking guy, regularly being asked about his cooking content during interviews. In January of 2022, his wife became pregnant with their second child, Aww. and they desperately needed to find another source of income. He started doing more and more food reviews, but they weren't that organized, and he was very generous with his ratings. We are sitting outside of firehouses because today we are doing an official Thick and cheese. This has the perfect amount of spice. Like my tongue is tingling a little bit. Yeah, that's not. That's not. He's not gassing that. Firehouse subs is it clears, bro. I, look, I tell you right now, man. Get you a medium steak and cheese with a diet coke, man. Your day's gonna be good, bro. I can tell you right now, bro. Firehouse is amazing, bro. I got that feeling on my lips. You still taste all of the flavor. Yes. Yes. 10 out of 10. Keith says yes. he leaned on his faith and prayed something good would come from this TikTok thing. And it did. In June of 2022, he signed a brand deal with stop? Wingstop worth six figures, the same amount he had lost from the Bellator contract. Oh. He successfully was making a career on TikTok, but it was about to get a whole lot better. His food reviews slowly started to become Shake his main that. content because his brutal honesty was very entertaining. Altogether, this food was $50 and the customer service was terrible. The lady at the front where I was picking up was really rude. Like, extremely rude. I had to call back and get her name. I think she lied because she answered the phone like I didn't recognize her voice and said, hold on, let me go get the girl. You the girl. Then in October, <laughs> the popular YouTube channel People vs. Food approached him to collaborate on their channel, and he accepted. This channel has over 12 million YouTube subscribers, and he knew the exposure would help his TikTok career immensely. By the way, double check if you're subscribed to my channel. And I asked my wife if you're what I should to post my on my page to make people not only come and watch, but actually follow. And we decided to post one full review every day. The first got like 11 million views. Ooh. From there, Keith's entire content shifted to strictly food reviews. He has only been doing it full time for one year at this point, but he never could have predicted what was about to happen next. While most high-profile food critics only pay attention to high-end restaurants that are too expensive for- Bro, what the fuck is that? Why don't niggas sign up to go to these type of restaurants? Bro, what is that? And how much is it? I bet it's like a thousand dollars or some shit. Bro, someone bring in the Popeyes, man. Stop playing with me, bro. What's that little Mickey Mouse-ass portion size gonna do for you? For most, Keith shifted that focus onto affordable, small, family-owned. Overtime reposted me. Doing what? What did I do to be posted on overtime? I know I wasn't going crazy playing basketball recently. What did I do? Sucking dick. All right. The monitor. <laughs> All right. Restaurants that were easily accessible to the public, or fast food slash popular affordable food chains. He even went out of his way to give a chance to establishments that were struggling financially. However, Keith doesn't consider himself a food critic. His reviews feel and look like one of your friends giving you a casual breakdown. A typical review would be him ordering three or four different items on the menu, like a family of four would, then tasting every single item and rating it from one to ten. He often throws in other notes like their customer service or additional information so that is relevant. The experience. I got it. Let's try it and rate it one through ten. I spent twenty dollars and eighty-four cents <laughs> on three bottle buns and a drink. But bro, that's what they look like. Custom service, delightful. It was a very short interaction, but the guy who worked at the front was really nice. And the actual building itself, very aesthetically pleasing. It made me want to eat. Wait a minute, bro. Personally, it was lacking spice, so to add in the salsa, took the tacos itself from a nine to a 9.7. Damn. That's one of them one. Even when he gives a negative review to the food, he will provide more context so it doesn't come off as unfair. He often goes out of his way to leave massive tips, sometimes hundreds of dollars to workers that give Damn. him good service. Since he had already built a strong foundation during his family man era, there wasn't necessarily one viral review that changed his life. His it's growth has been steady, it's it's and along the journey, way. his audience latched on to his down-to-earth attitude, unwavering love for his wife and kids. Now, can we clap it up for wifey, man? Bro, she, she believed in him. 
and held it down the whole way when he was struggling and down bad, bro. What a beautiful sight. We need to celebrate shit like that, man. It's and dedication to God. But even if you don't know about his past, after watching a few videos, you can just feel he is a kind and genuine man. They didn't care about Keith not being technically qualified nor having a depth of culinary knowledge. He thinks what sets him apart is his values. I stand on my integrity. I stand on my values. And I don't allow those to be wavered or to be shook no matter the amount of money, the opportunity, or the people I'm surrounded That's by. Beautiful. With nearly 10 million loyal followers, a full-time dedication to quality reviews of local or less popular You're restaurants, about to make me a phenomenon dubbed the Keith Lee effect would take over Las Vegas. You know, you know what I like about Keith USA. Lee? I like I like that Keith Lee doesn't rely on using big names to get views. You feel me? Like he doesn't have to wait for a new Popeye shit to drop and jump on it. Like he'll review just a random mom and pop shop. Tell me. So like, I know when I want to go to a specific city, I'm like, damn, that's the place. This might have some fire shit. Like a place I would actually want to go to. I'm not going to go to like a fucking, if I'm, especially if I'm visiting like a different place for the first time, I'm not going to a big chain restaurant, man. Unless it's like very popular, like in and out you've never done it before. I like the fact that he just does what people ask. Some people would text him like, yo, go to this place, go to this place. And he'll go to places the locals know, not places like that's just like spam, like franchises. One of the first beneficiaries of the Keith Lee effect was a local food truck called 303 in the Cut. In November 2022, Keith's review blew up and garnered over 35 million Yo! TikTok views since its initial upload. Keith confirmed their cheesecake sandwich was a 10. Oh Lord, I'm Lord, I'm eating good and I pray I have the strength to complete this weight loss challenge because I did not know a fucking cheesecake sandwich existed. Oh my God, you know cheesecake chat. You know, next to Cinnabon, that's literally one of my favorite things, bro. <sighs> Let me tell you a story. Not too far from here, they got this cheesecake baklava at this Greek spot. It's a thousand calories, chat. But it's full of life. I... When I... Reach my weight goal and get to 199 pounds. I'll have a cheesecake baklava or two. I will have a full rack of mini Cinnabons. I will have Five Guys cheeseburger with Cajun fries. I am going to eat swell and then get back on my shit literally the next day. L literally the next day, bro. Literally the next day. Oh, it's going to be a crazy mukbang. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I've been on my shit, though. I've been locked in, bro. 220 today. 220 today. 220 today. I'm about to hit 219 tomorrow or day after, bro. 10 out of 10. And the next night, 303 had people waiting in line for over an hour Yo, wrapped bullshit. around the corner for their food. The bullshit. owner said they doubled their income in one day and it stayed that way for over a year. Yo. One Las Vegas pizzeria he reviewed, Frankenson's, made headlines for attracting lines around the block because Keith gave their wings a 10, pizza a 9.8, and garlic knots a 9.2. However, it wasn't just the food. It was Keith's interaction with the owner, Frank, that made people want to support him even more. If I don't like the food, I gotta tell you, I'm not trying to be malicious. And he was like, I'm going to be real with you, too. I need help. Yeah, 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 that hit me here. He said, the food is delicious. He has great reviews on Yelp. The only bad reviews is that he don't close the time it says that he closed on Google. The time it says he closed on Google is 1 a.m. He was like, I literally can't afford to open that late because we don't get that much business. Frank, if you're watching this, I'm going to be completely honest. You are an amazing man from what I saw. I appreciated your time and I appreciated your conversation. Let's try this food. According to Frank, Frankincense had to hire 23 new team members in the six weeks following Keith's review oh and God. had guests from all over the world patiently waiting for over three hours for his pizza. Frank said he was Bro. thankful that Keith helped his business and the overall community at large in Las Vegas. Yasser Zermino, owner of Aroma Latin American Cochina, asked Keith to come review their restaurant through email. Keith gave all five different items over a nine, including the Oaxaca sandwich, which he said was the best he had ever had in his life. The owner said, we went from not being able to pay the bills to now having to hire people to come and help us. But you know what that means though? Like most people and businesses, restaurants, whatever, y'all problem is not the talent. Like y'all be making good food. Y'all can't market shit. 
And then it's the vice versa too. There's some companies that make shit products. I don't even know how they're still in business, but their marketing is elite. So they be convincing niggas to come in. But y'all have to like, if you know your products is fire, you have to figure out a way to get people to care. You feel me? Without, because Keith Lee can't go to every restaurant. You feel me? And it's like, bro, I, I hate seeing bad restaurants go under, bro. I really do, my nigga. Like, there was this Indian spot that went under during COVID near my house. And it had the greatest garlic naan and butter chicken I had in my life. Which is crazy. There's so much Indian niggas in Toronto. You would think Toronto's the best Indian. No, no, no. It was in Atlanta. Just a random spot. And it was called Tundur. That's it. Just, it just had a generic ass name. Niggas didn't know how to fucking market. But that butter chicken and garlic naan put me straight to sleep. Oh, and the biryani was fire too. Yeah, man. And if you're in an area with some food, a restaurant, a business you fuck with, you have to support it. It's not, yo, it's vicious out there in business, nigga. Like, so if you fuck with something and you have the means to support it, support it. It won't hurt. It won't hurt to support it. You'll keep them in business. I tried single-handedly to keep O'Charlie's in business. I failed. Shit, niggas went under, bro. So now I can't have no more O'Charlie's. So don't make the same mistake, bro. Other Vegas-based businesses that Keith reviewed have seen instant growth, like Caribbean restaurant The Pink Potato or Southern Taste Seafood, a food truck that went from making $200 or under a day to seeing a 900% increase in revenue in the days following Keith's review. But his impact wasn't just on small businesses. Even Chipotle, Fuck the Chipotle. fast casual chain that generated $8.6 billion in revenue in 2022, saw the benefits of the Keith Lee effect. In early 2023, a reviewer named Alexis Frost posted How do you even a review of how do you eat that? An order of a steak quesadilla with extra cheese and fajita veggies that fans say tastes like a Philly cheesesteak. Yo, bro, Chipotle, do I get my fucking $50 back from that little two bowls you sent me on DoorDash where you scam me, nigga? I'm Chipotle K, nigga. I don't give a fuck if you send a million dollar brand deal my way, nigga. I want that 50 back. Simple as that, bro. Till I get my 50 back, I'm Chipotle K. Steak. Keith reviewed it and gave it a 9.8. Then chaos ensued. Chipotle workers all over the country were overwhelmed with the tens of thousands of people coming in to order this hack. One employee said the worst shift of her life was ah! servicing this trend. Oh, Another employee said a customer tried to swing on him, aka fight him, because he couldn't make the food. Managers started posting signs that say, protein and cheese on quesadilla only. Chipotle realized the only way to solve this problem was by adding the hack as an option on their menu, dubbed the Keithadilla. Keith quickly became well known all over Las Vegas. Did, this, Once he did he get royalties? He must have got some royalties. There's no way. If they did that for the free, they scammed the fuck out of him. Partnered up with Mr. Beast to give $10,000 to a struggling business. He couldn't even go outside without being swarmed. So he dressed up in silly disguises to avoid being recognized. But his impact is not just in Vegas. Keith got to review a local Brooklyn bakery that he selected oh, that while good. being interviewed on Good Morning America, while also donating $10,000 to that business. He continued to do press runs being interviewed on talk shows around America, and of course, reviewing food. So now that we know how much positive impact Keith can have on a business when he likes the food, what about when Aww. he doesn't like the food? Well, unfortunately, the entire city of Atlanta would find out about the negative side of the Keith Lee effect. In October 2023, Keith announced to his nearly 15 million TikTok followers that he and his family were traveling to Atlanta, Georgia, and needed some restaurant recommendations. He had previously made videos in Detroit, Chicago, New Orleans, New York, and Los Angeles, but Atlanta's food scene is entirely different, which prompted a lot of mixed reviews from Keith. The drama first began when Keith visited the Atlanta Breakfast Club, where he wanted to take the food to go, but they didn't have anywhere to sit and wait for the food. So instead, they decided to dine in, but the restaurant wouldn't allow them to sit down at a table and be served unless the entire party was there. Upon finding out that they were charged $1 for butter at a breakfast place, it was just an annoying cherry on top. Little did Keith- Yo, Atlanta's such a bougie city, bro. They try and make you feel like you're not welcome because they feel like they're more important than you sometimes. It's, it's, a, it's a genre of people in Atlanta that move like that. And not just people, businesses too, but it's just so corny to me. Nick, we do, we do, we do not know you, ma'am, sir. Get it together. Why the fuck you got such an ego for? That specific spot, I tried going there one time. It's like a two-hour wait just to get inside. Like, because, you know, all the bad bitches want to go to brunch and shit, so it's just really packed, bro. And I heard a lot of things about it. I, and I think one, like one time I had someone go for me and just bring me some food back, but I've never sat down and, and ate the shit before. But like, I just thought like, I knew he was going to get this experience because the rudeness is part of the culture here, bro. 
I, I don't even go to restaurants here and expect good service because I'd just be disappointed unless I go to Chick-fil-A. But that's not really an Atlanta thing. That's a Chick-fil-A thing. When you go to when you come to Atlanta, you just have to know they probably gonna get your shit wrong. Okay. They'll probably um it's like a it's like a I don't know what it is about the city. I had to get used to the shit early on. The first year it pissed me off. I'm like, why is everyone so rude here? God damn, nigga. Why is everybody so fucking rude in the city? I thought like I'm like Southern hospitality, that shit does not exist. But you just get used to it after a while. I'm not going to lie to you. And you just adjust. Now I don't even have the expectations. Shit's going to go according to plan. But especially when you go to those bougie places, bro. Because uh, that place is expensive as fuck, too. Keith know it was about to get worse. Keith posted his review of The Real Milk and Honey, however, he didn't actually get any food. Firstly, he tried to call ahead and order. They don't accept call-ins. You can only order on the DoorDash app. But DoorDash said that they were closed. So they drove to the establishment in the middle of the day and the employees said they were closed for deep cleaning while there were customers walking in and picking up orders. <laughs> in the middle then of Keith the day. Keith walked into the restaurant and they recognized him and immediately attempted to serve him since he is famous, to which he declined. Keith has always been very expressive that he doesn't want nor deserve special treatment from restaurants. These days, he sends in his friends and family to do orders so he doesn't receive bias from the establishment. He wants his experience to match any ordinary person. I've personally never seen a restaurant have a rules list, but the real milk and honey have a ton. We guarantee great food. Everything else is left to chance. We do not provide individual checks. 18% gratuity added to parties of five or more or checks larger than $105. No reservations, unless you're Barack Obama. No parties larger than four on days that end in Y. Keith was clearly frustrated that a business would change- Bro, like shit like that is so brain dead. Like how the fuck are you not gonna allow parties of four, but then you have a rule over here, 18% gratuity to parties of five or more. Bro, I'm telling you, these rules apply to regular people, people they consider regular. If they know who you are or they think they can use you to benefit their restaurant, like you're a popular person, these rules don't exist for you. I mean, you could show up at 2 a.m. They're going to open that bitch for you, bro. These exist to people that they feel like they can't benefit from. And um, unfortunately, it's become like this thing of part of like, especially in black culture where you feel entitled to other people's dollars. Bro, there's actually a lot of great black businesses in Atlanta. Bro, I'm not, I'm not obligated to spend money with yours, ma'am, sir. So I'll take my money and go elsewhere. That's how I move. I don't even get mad. At, 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 like if shit like this happened to me, I, I just like, I'll be like, damn, I, now I know not to spend money here. I regret spending money here in the past. I'll adjust. Simple, bro. Simple. No parties larger than four on days that end in Y. Keith was clearly frustrated that a business would change the rules when it benefits Most them. Most of the good places in Atlanta, though, is in the, the hood. I'm not gonna lie. Because he had a bad experience. However, it's not these the internet places. being the internet started attacking. There was actually another restaurant called Milk and Honey whose owners were receiving death threats in the DMs because of people confusing them with the other restaurant. But if you had any sympathy for the real Milk and Honey, it would be gone once you saw their response video they uploaded to TikTok. Did you see this Keith Lee video about the real Milk and Honey? And who is this Keith Lee? Daddy. You don't know Keith Lee? Yeah. No. The owner tried to look cool and pretend like he didn't know the entirety of social media is destroying his business, but it only made people want to support their business less. To add insult to injury, Keith reviewed the bodega positively, which is directly next door to the Real Milk and Honey, which resulted in a line of customers skipping the Real Milk and Honey to wait in line for the bodega. But the shenanigans continued. Keith reviewed another ATL hey, restaurant called the Old Lady Gang, but again, did not get any food. He tried to call their number, no answer. Tried to order on DoorDash, said they were closed. He sent his family into the physical store to do takeout. They said they don't do to-go orders on the weekends, but the wait to dine in was one and a half hours and they yeah. didn't take reservations. Instead of leaving, Keith decided to walk in where he was recognized and immediately they offered him a seat, skipping the entire hour and a half wait, to which Keith denied because he didn't want any celebrity treatment. This is exactly how it is for us regular ATL folks. Imagine them telling you your wait time is one and a half hours, then someone else comes up and sits immediately. Keith left and visited Toast on Lennox, where he didn't plan on doing a review, but arrived to a two and a half hour wait time. Bro, why are all the places they told him to go to is, chat, these are all bougie destinations. They're all the bougie spots, like Lennox, Buckhead, like it's, it's, the, it's the places you be going, like, you be, oh, you wanna go to brunch? It be those places, it's not a fire spot. Bro, if you ask a random nigga in Atlanta what the fire spots are, they're not going to tell you these bougie places, bro. I guess it depends on what crowd you ask. But most of the people I ask, they're going to tell you something like J.J. Fish is just 
fucking smack dab in the hood, man. And yeah, I, I guess that's a little dangerous for a person like Keith Lee, but niggas gonna be fine, bro. Like, pull up with security if you need to. Like, American Deli in the hood is fire too, but that's more of like a chain, so I wouldn't even recommend it if you go to American Deli. But there's so much like good options, bro. The the place we did the first uh, restaurant video in Ain't Peak, I think it's called Yummies. That's on the south side of Atlanta, and they have some fucking phenomenal food, bro. And all these, some of these like low key mom and pop shops be like, they their business is low key slow. Feel me? And they can't afford to keep open after certain hours, so they be closing at like three, four p.m. So it's like they could use the attention too. But like, man, I just hate that these type of spots got the attention. This is the type of spot you'd be fucking. I don't know, bro. When he politely left, the entire staff walked. He visited a bunch of normal spots too and gave good reviews. I gotta see those ones. I never got a chance to see those ones, bro. Cause I haven't seen everything in Atlanta, so I want. I would love to try some new food, especially if it's not too far from. Dow and offered him a seat immediately, to which he denied again. There were videos that went viral of him in the parking lot, seemingly arguing with the staff, but he was just letting them know that he didn't want to skip the line. But Keith's experiences are not just unique to him. Cardi B spoke on the subject on an IG Live. I feel like Atlanta restaurants, they don't like to make money. I feel like they don't yeah, like ass, people, bro. they don't like their customers, the they just ass. don't like it. First thing first, right? You could barely order in Atlanta restaurants. Like you go like, hey, I would like to make an order. Oh yeah, we don't make, we don't we don't take orders. We don't take orders. Yep. It gets to the point that I literally have to name like I have to tell like people that order food for me, like, can you just name drop my name? Because first and first, they just don't they don't do no pickup orders, they don't do deliveries, they just don't do shit. And of course, we got some hilarious memes from this whole situation. You walk in, let me show you how it's done. Hello, sir. How are you today? May I take your order? You talk like that. We talk like that, cause Keith Lee is in town, bro. That boy Keith Lee in the love now. <laughs> hey, y'all, are y'all little booze at restaurants? Y'all better get on your goddamn zoom now. Hey, uh, milk and honey. Uh huh. See that was how I like get for giving me attitude when I told y'all my partner was just down the street parking the car. Although most people were understanding of Keith's frustration with these <laughs> ATL businesses, others, like ex-football player Chad Ochocinco, thought he was trying to tear down black-owned businesses. I don't, like I don't like the critiquing of our restaurants and, and having people and- It's not our Ochocinco. They don't feel like it's everyone's restaurant. They love the exclusivity. They love making people feel like they can't. They have to wait hours just to get a seat. They are ex they're excluding us. It's not our shit. It's their shit. They don't give a fuck about us. Fuck. And and, and talking bad about our goddamn businesses and okay. like dude, you know okay. how hard you know how it hard is. it is. And I get it. Ocho. For us to Ocho. even get in the food industry. What are the qualifications of being a food critic? Go to a restaurant and do you like the food? Did you like the customer service? What was it like? Yes. What was the wait time like? That's all you gotta They'll do. Take At the end of the bro. day, Keith just gives his honest opinion and experience, but he implores everyone to try for themselves. If he is too positive, his opinion will hold no weight. If he is too negative, he will be seen as destructive. There will always be haters. However, broadcasting his opinion to 14 million followers will, without a doubt, prevent a lot of people from trying a restaurant. If someone I trust says, don't go somewhere to eat, I'll probably listen to them. Or if I have one bad experience, I probably won't go there again. This is why some people argue that you can't have a bad day in the customer service industry. If you can't afford a bad review, then you shouldn't give bad service, especially if you are inviting a food critic to your establishment, that which is. a lot of these restaurants do. Through all the drama, Keith found a lot of gems in Atlanta. The seafood menu, seafood menu? Juicy Jerk, the okay. dining experience, which he personally tipped the owner $2,000, and Jamaican Jerk Biz, where the owner broke into tears when he walked in. He asked the owner what her sales were for the day, which was $2,600, and he paid her $3,000 for his meal. However, Keith just announced that he's on his way to Houston to do a food tour, and restaurant owners are trembling. In just 10 months of fame, Keith has helped hundreds of businesses, raised tens of thousands of dollars for charity, and continues to spread love and positivity during a time where we need it the most. Maybe from here he will start a food review show, or a cooking show, or maybe an app for restaurants all around the country that he recommends. As long as he remains the positive and wholesome man social media knows and loves, they will support whatever endeavor he chooses. Finally, the internet made the right person famous. Mm -hmm. W Keith Lee. Hey man, that was a good fucking video, Patrick. Good fucking video, man. Good video. Oh, so you like the video? Oh, yeah. Boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you're gonna like that one too, man. Yeah. Go ahead, just. Oh. Bro, click yeah, the buddy. What that? Bro, that's what I be saying. Like.